In this lesson, we covered the aspects of information security risk, including risk assessments and managing discovered risk. Managing information security is all about managing risk. Understanding the risk associated with critical systems and sensitive information is essential for implementing the needed controls. It's important to properly define risk before we look how to manage it. Risk is the likelihood that a threat will compromise or destroy an information asset and the damage that will occur if that happens. Risk should be thought of as loss of profits, a diminished bottom line. Various frameworks exist for assessing risk. Because they may be based on industry, an organization must select the right one, and what should be selected and used to ensure consistency, measurability, standardization, comprehensiveness, and modularity. Consistency ensures that the governance program consistently oversees and inspects for management expectations in how security and privacy are managed. Measurability enables an organization to set goals and determine how well those goals are met. Frameworks usually include methods for accomplishing this. Standardization enables all parts of an organization to be assessed in the same way. Comprehensiveness ensures that risk management includes statutory and regulatory requirements, as well as allowing inclusion of requirements mandated by organization policies. Modularity enables changes to how an organization manages risk. Only the areas of management need changes when management's or government's expectations change. General risk management frameworks include the ISO 31000 series, ITIL, NIST SP800-37, COSO, FIPS199, which is a supporting framework, COBITS, RISC IT, and PCI DSS standards. For the rest of this lesson, I use this model from the NIST SP800-37. It's one of the best graphic models I've found for quickly understanding how to perform a risk assessment. The first step when approaching a risk assessment is to set the scope and conditions of the assessment. This includes understanding management's appetite for risk and the scope of the assessment. Many assessments only address a single system. Also needed are any assumptions or constraints about the risk, the system, or related organizational practices. Finally, the assessor needs to understand the organization's preferred methods of risk response and the processes for managing stakeholder communications. Step two is to perform the assessment. The activities included in this step include identifying threats and their motives and capabilities, or means, the second activity is to identify vulnerabilities. Once this is done, the assessor may communicate results to management. This is especially true if a critical vulnerability is discovered that needs immediate attention. Finally, the assessor determines the likelihood that one or more of the threats may successfully attack the risk target and the resulting business impact. These activities are represented sequentially, but this process is often cyclical. Threats can be human or natural. A threat is anything that has a reasonable probability of leveraging one or more vulnerabilities causing business impact. Vulnerabilities are weaknesses that provide opportunities for threat actors. They can be caused by several factors, including misconfiguration, weak authentication, software development practices, lack of employee training, poor hardware design, and human error. Let's look at the threat, vulnerability, and impact relationships. A threat actor employs a set of means to exploit one or more vulnerabilities to reach a target. The likelihood that this will happen depends on how weak the vulnerabilities are, the effort needed to exploit them, and the motivation of the attacker. 
strong motivation will cause a threat actor to use greater efforts to reach a target. Another way of looking at the elements of risk is by using a formulaic model. This is one of the most popular models. Risk equals threats times vulnerabilities times business impact. It shows that minimizing or eliminating any of the three factors significantly reduces risk. However, it does not show the entire picture. This is a more detailed model. It shows that the threat is divided into motive and means. These are important characteristics to understand. Vulnerabilities are renamed opportunities, which is what they are, opportunities for a threat actor. The factor represented by the threat characteristics and opportunity is the likelihood of occurrence. Business impact is the adverse effect on a business when a threat successfully compromises, steals, or destroys one or more information assets. Impact is the negative effect of an incident on the organization's net profit or loss. When using only dollars for calculating impact, it is a quantitative analysis. When using a rating scheme, it is a qualitative analysis. When using both, it is a hybrid analysis. Many outcomes of an incident can adversely affect a business, including loss of business due to downtime or loss of customer confidence, fines due to regulatory violations, litigation because of the impact of an incident on vendors, suppliers, customers, and shareholders, Costs associated with helping customers or employees work through identity theft challenges and loss of capitalization due to loss of investor confidence. Again, a quantitative analysis uses dollar amounts to calculate the risk value. Before looking at how this works, we need to understand some terms. The ALE is the expected loss per year based on the risk identified. This is used with annual costs of controls or other mitigation steps that would reduce the risk. Once the annual cost of the controls exceeds the ALE, management is likely to accept the risk. The SLE is the total business dollar cost if a single event occurs. The ARO is how often we expect an event to occur. This is usually expressed as a value less than one. For example, if an organization performs research on a threat and expects a potential successful attack every five years, the ARO is calculated by dividing 1 by 5, resulting in an ARO of 0.2. In this example, the assessor determined that it was probable that a threat actor will successfully breach the assess system. Security and the system and data owners believe the cost of a single successful breach, the SLE, would be about $250,000. It would be more, but current controls would help limit the impact. The ARO is 0 0.1. When we multiply the SLE by the ARO, we get $25,000, which is the annual cost of the attack. If the annual cost of controls or cyber insurance meaningfully exceeds $25,000, then management is likely to accept the risk. Another way of looking at the value of a control or countermeasure is with this formula, which subtracts the annual cost of a countermeasure from the difference between the ALE before implementation of the countermeasure and the ALE after the countermeasure's implementation. A countermeasure can be adjusted of existing controls or procedures, implementation of new controls or procedures, or paying for cyber insurance. If the countermeasure value is a negative value, the countermeasure might need an adjustment or management might just accept the risk. A qualitative assessment addresses the same factors as a quantitative approach. However, instead of using dollars, it uses values that represent levels of risk with values such as high, low, or a range of numbers. This is a sample of a simple qualitative risk matrix. It takes into account both probability of occurrence and resulting business impact. 
Impact is determined by working with management. Management will think in terms of losses if they understand the impact from loss of business critical functions, fines, litigations, etc. The dollars will not be exact, but they will be close enough. This table works well for natural disasters and other non-human threats, but it falls short when assessing human threats. This is a qualitative risk calculator, an Excel workbook, I created and used for several years. It uses more variables to determine the qualitative risk for specific attacks against specific systems. The team starts by entering both the threat actor and the associated vulnerabilities. There may be more than one vulnerability, which are placed on different rows. The values placed in the remaining columns are based on guidelines on other worksheets in the workbook. The team enters means and a motive values for likelihood of occurrence. The system vulnerability value is automatically filled by completing the system value worksheet. Finally, the team enters the vulnerability severity and the value representing how well the existing controls, including response, will mitigate impact. Once the final value is entered, the risk calculator arrives at a risk value. The risk value helps to prioritize risk management efforts. The level of risk is determined as low, medium, or high based on the shown guidelines, which are also included in the calculator workbook. You can download this calculator from adventuresinsecurity.com slash tools slash qualitative underscore risk underscore calculator underscore v1 dot xls. Deciding whether to use the quantitative or qualitative approach largely depends on management's willingness to spend the time necessary to calculate all related costs per incident, per system. None of the organizations for which I've worked, small to large, were willing to do this. Consequently, I always performed a qualitative or hybrid assessment based on management's involvement. Once risk is calculated, there are four primary ways an organization should manage it. Management can accept the risk. This is usually done when the cost of either eliminating whatever is causing the risk or employing controls to reduce the risk are more expensive than the potential negative impact. An organization can transfer incident costs to another entity. An example of this is purchasing cyber insurance. It is important to remember that transfer does not remove responsibility for the event and its consequences from the victim organization. The organization can mitigate risk by changing procedures, replacing applications, or by implementing security controls. Finally, an organization can avoid risk by eliminating the business procedures, data, or technology that is causing the risk. That's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.